Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. Quite an interesting day as we see that the market take a little tumble. And the reason is why is, of course, Jerome Powell. So unfortunately, everything must come to pass. And uh, you've probably heard this already. This is just uh, what is happening. So it looks like as far as like a Fed uh, recap, Powell shoots down a March rate cut. And it's a funny thing in, in, the, uh, in the markets. It seems like everybody is so sure that they're always correct and that there is uh, no definition of, uh, of them for ever being wrong. And they're like, this is definitely going to happen. And of course, the March rate cut is probably not going to happen. And CNBC did a really good job of uh, pretty much condensing all the information over the uh, 45 to an hour long uh, conference that uh, Jerome Powell did. And here are the highlights so you know what is going on. So first up, Jerome Powell states, we're trying to get comfortable and gain confidence that inflation is on a sustainable path down towards 2%. And I got to be honest with you, he's doing, uh, actually, they're doing a pretty reasonable job of actually fighting inflation and not doing the same mistake that's, that uh, was led to Volcker, Volcker coming in for the Federal Reserve in the late 70s, as before his predecessor, uh, Burns from the Fed chair, had actually dropped or increased rates. Then they cut a little bit too soon. Then, of course, there was hyperinflation and it led to a lot of different problems into the 70s and the early 80s. So, you know, in all honesty, uh, not doing too bad. And if anybody says like, ah, inflation isn't, isn't, isn't too out of control, eh, it's debatable. So that's just one piece. Based on the meeting today, I would tell you that I don't think it's likely that the committee will reach a level of confidence by the time of the March meeting to identify March as the time to do that. What he's saying, of course, is the rate cuts. And what we get about that, that rate cut mentality, uh, we took a look at this actually uh, last week on NFA Live, matter of fact. And it was amazing because uh, the current rate is uh, 525 to 550. And these numbers right here, because the next meeting, of course, is uh, 20th of March, 2024. Last, when we looked at it, it was like half and half. I think it was almost uh, a little bit higher on the uh, 500 to 525 level, meaning that they everybody thought that, you know, Jerome was going to cut. And of course, all the different metrics, and the polls and the information and, and the quantitative analysis always, they put that in and say, okay, well, if there's going to be a rate cut here, that's good for the markets and we're going to start buying. And of course, what happens when it doesn't? Well, it goes in reverse. I This is why I, like the market sometimes just confuse me because I'm like, why do they even try to forecast it? Why don't they just stick around for the long haul and, you know, see what happens and slowly accumulate like like we do and uh, get out of here and actually have a, a reasonable uh, level of profitability just by sticking around. And then as far as like labor goes, he states, of course, if labor, if inflation were to surprise by moving back up, we would have to respond to that and would be a surprise at this point, basically saying that if there's a problem with uh, as far as like uh, the market's not responding, they, of course, will start to uh, not cut rates, but raise rates. But that will be a surprise, he states. But I have to tell you, that's why we keep our options open and why we're not rushing. And that is for sure. They have been uh, very even keel as to what they're doing. And of course, looking at the data, which is what they were going to do anyhow. Powell State, there's a way to go before a soft landing has been achieved. This was the most interesting part to me because, you know, when we think about these recession points, you know, we we hear Jerome Powell and we hear a lot of pundits say that it's going to be a soft landing, and it's actually laughable, you know, when we when we think about it. But in all honesty, I mean, from right now, and some people will say, well, there's always a recession. We're already in recession. Well, the economic data doesn't point to that right now, even though there are some data points that you can say that yes, it looks like we are moving towards a recession. But as far as like the definition of a recession, what if the government wants to say that actually is, no. We're not in a recession right now. So as far as like a soft landing, here's what he said. Certainly I'm encouraged and we're encouraged by the progress, but we're not declaring victory at all. At this point, we think we have a ways to go. And uh, if he pulls it off, congratulations. And then of course he talks about feds needs to see more evidence that uh, falling inflation is sustainable, says Powell, and then goes into some other stuff. But yeah, it really comes down to this. You know, if if the inflation rate can actually stay at the level that they want it to and actually keep decreasing that magical 2% number, then fantastic, great. We've hit a uh, soft recession, everybody's happy. Moving into the Q2, Q3, Q4 of 2024, you know, I still think at some point we could hit a recession. But again, remember, the recessions are 
historically speaking, roughly 10 months in length. And the recessions themselves are the economy. And the markets and the economy are two different things. So even if we do get into a recession, just so you know, on average, it takes six to seven months for the markets to rebound from that point. And of course, the economy then recovers later. So even if we do hit a recession, I still say we're in the right place at the right time, especially with the Bitcoin having coming up. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then, of course, what happened with uh, the markets itself today? Well, it was a little bit of uh, turmoil. And this again, this is not surprising. Like I, when I saw this today, I was like, this is great because, you know, my... I mean, tomorrow, it's, it probably won't recover by tomorrow, so this is good for me. I will just keep dollar cost averaging. I got a pretty long horizon, so I was actually like pleasantly surprised when it didn't hit 44,000. I was like, hey, great. We're below 43. This is pretty good. Ethereum's down. Everything's down. Let's see what the biggest downer was today. Solana. And of course, we're going to talk about the Jupiter airdrop that uh, it actually did quite well and uh, maintained after its $2 peak, but uh, yeah, whatever. Let's see, Cardano, Avalanche. I mean, all the altcoins are down pretty heavily. Uh, and you know what I'd like to see? I would like to see if we can put the currency into, let's denominate everything but Bitcoin and see how everything's doing. Well, Tether's up. No one cares about Tether. Let's see. So let's see. Oh, XRP in the last 24 hours is up 0 0.5. <laughs> the dollar is up against Bitcoin. But I like to do this every so often just to see what, if you just put your money into Bitcoin, how you would do. And today it's looking like you should have just put it into Bitcoin. And that's just a lesson. Now, this doesn't happen every time. Like, look, here's Monero at 4.7%. Congratulations. Bit tensor at Tau, which was on a tear lately. So good for you guys. First digital USD. All right. I'm going to guess that's another stable coin. But a lot of red across the board, squeeze up a little bit. But for the most part, you know, Bitcoin is it. And that's why, like, as we move into the, to the, the bull market, just be aware that a lot of people are going to tell you that this is the greatest thing of all time and this altcoin, whatever else. And you can do that. And I can't give you financial advice much, Dad, but I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes it's less, it's just good to not have so much stress and just say, you know what, if I go into Bitcoin over a four-year time horizon, Things usually work out. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments. And then also, I was buoyed by this. And this was uh, Thomas, heyapollo.com, a uh, wonderful Twitter account, uh, links in the description. And I just like to do this. James is doing a great job over in Best Answers doing all these, these diagrams. But uh, I just saw this and said to myself, well, at some point, maybe everybody's right. There's going to be a supply shock. And we can just see here that the, the, the nine ETF inflows in orange, we can see how much it's actually been. And then we can see, of course, the grayscale Bitcoin outflows. Now, of course, grayscale Bitcoin, everybody's trying to get out of that because the fees are so high. They refuse to drop them. Also, in the fact that FTX and who knows what other different types of uh, players are actually in the uh, what was the grayscale trust, which has been transferred over to the, the grayscale ETF. There's a lot of dumping going on because they had to. And we can see, I mean, I'm not a genius or a TA person. That's a pretty nice trend. There's less dumpage, and I like that. So as time goes on, maybe we see a lot less grayscale dumping, and uh, you know maybe we can actually see some price appreciation going on with uh, Bitcoin. And of course, if Bitcoin goes up, usually what follows is your precious altcoins. So I like that. This is a bullish indicator. Very happy with that. Um, but on the flip side of that, this is not bullish. Uh, it's from Zach XBT, and it looks like Ripple was hacked. And before everybody starts to lose their mind, it was just a wallet, a special wallet. But it states, and if you don't know Zach XBT, he's like the internet sleuth, rug pull survivor turned 2D detective. He's had a lot of great information, I must admit. And he says, yeah, it appears that Ad Ripple was hacked for 213 million or $112.5 million. Here's the source address and he goes through here. So this was one wallet. It was hacked and transferred over here. And the question is, well, whose wallet is that? It's Chris Larson, co-founder of Ripple. And he states, yesterday there was an unauthorized access to a few, not all, I might add, to just a few of my personal XRP accounts, not Ripple's. We were quickly able to catch the problem and notify exchanges to freeze the effective addresses. Law enforcement is already involved. Hoorah, hoorah. The thing I'm just thinking to myself is, man, Chris Larson's got a lot of XRP that uh, 
I'm just saying, could potentially be dumped on the markets. Maybe there's a reason why. What? It, how is... Let me switch this back just real quick. Because it always astounds me how poorly, as far as price appreciation, XRP does. Now, don't shoot the messenger. I own XRP. I want it to go up just as bad as you guys do. But it's amazing to me just how... Yeah, I heard it. Oh, look at that. Ripple executive report on the rise access. It's just amazing to me just how poorly the price appreciation actually does. Let's let's zoom out a little bit. Let's take a year. All right. And over a year, it's up a whopping 24.3%. Watch out. I mean, did they not, did Ripple not beat the SEC like a little boy drum and just really thump them and put them in a submission? And the SEC had to actually say that. XRP is a ripple. XRP is not a security. You would think that after that, they would just be to the moon and they would make up for lost time because they really did get screwed on the last uh, bull run. I'm sorry, guys, you did. But no, it's just very flat. So I wonder if it's just a bunch of uh, sell pressure going on in the background with the custody wallet. I know, of course, you can say, well, there's only so much custody and they put it back in and then goes. I get it. But it's just, it's just surprising to me. And uh, since 2017, when I got in, it's always been the same thing. Just you wait. XRP is going to be the next big thing. However, I will give you this. It still is in the top 10. So action number six. Anyhow, just thinking out loud, kind of interesting. And then uh, on top of that, congratulations to all the new Jupiter holders. If you don't know, uh, Jupiter, you can find that at jup.ag. I believe that's right. Uh, yes, for the uh, airdrop. And anybody who used a Solana wallet and interacted with uh, the Jupiter decentralized exchange qualified for a Jupiter airdrop. I did not. Apparently, I just missed it. So bummer on me. But I'm happy for you guys that you got this. And uh, this was the criteria. How do you qualify? Well, 955,000 wallets which interact with Jupiter directly before the 2nd of November are eligible for the first Jupe airdrop, which is one of the biggest to date. I didn't do that. I used Orca. And uh, I'm sure there was an airdrop somewhere, uh, but uh, it didn't happen for me, but maybe it did it for you. And this was just essentially free money. And I'm glad that it happened for everybody. Uh, but I will say that it did drop pretty precipitously, uh, almost 67%. However, if we take a look at CoinGecko, and there's conflicting data, I, I, I must admit, because the data that I got first from the X account from Jupiter states that the price itself started at 40 cents. But for some reason over here in CoinGecko, it says $2. So if it was at 40 cents, I'm just telling you, if it was at 40 cents and it wasn't here at $2 and slipped to 65, but it was at 40, that means that it's, it's still up. And if you can see, I'm pleasantly surprised that, I mean, 63 cents, okay, let's just say it was two. Okay, it dropped a lot. But from here, all the dumpers might be gone because it's still at 66 cents. That's amazing, because I believe, correct me in the comment section, they dropped, they airdropped like 40% of their circulating supply. I'm not for sure about that one, I just saw that as a snippet, but if that's the truth, then everybody got all this airdrop. Who's selling? Not that much. And that's over a time horizon of between 11, I mean, that's like seven hours, seven and a half hours. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. But I got to tell you, that looks pretty good. I was kind of thought it would uh, drop more. So that could be one thing to watch. And congratulations to all you holders. So that'll take it for that. And then now it's going to do a little PSA and we'll get into a little Q&A. Public service announcements and, qu and questions and answers. Just so everybody knows, uh, the Tangent team sent this over to me. Tangem, one of my favorite wallets. I have it somewhere. Yeah, it's right here. Tangem has secured a week of zero fees, a week of zero fees on Changely for its user. Swaps on Changely are going to be added to Tangem on February 14th, Valentine's Day. The whole week thereafter, let me do some quick math, 14th to the 21st, uh, users will enjoy zero fees when swapping coins and tokens through Changely. So that's pretty awesome, especially if they're talking about tokens on the Ethereum chain. Because if it's Ethereum and there's no, there's no fees, that's incredible. If it's on like Polygon, eh, you, you, know, you, you, you saved a couple pennies. Uh, if it's on Solana, eh, you just saved a fraction of a cent. But still, pretty good. Sounds good to me. Good job, Tangem. Looks good. Also, uh, for everybody who got screwed over, uh, like myself, on Celsius and we got duped, 
Good news, two good pieces of news. Uh, Celsius is now called Ionic Digital Community, Excelsius. I will uh, not be following them. But they did state that from the lawyers at Kirkland and Ellis, distributions will begin today and tomorrow. Hey, congratulations. Maybe we'll get some money back or crypto or whatever it is. But we'll continue in the days and weeks there are afterwards. If you don't immediately receive instructions for a distribution, just wait longer. No, just kidding. It says, please be patient to be on the lookout for communication. So this is the information I got from here. If you want to go deeper into that, uh, I always re recommend two people to follow. SimonDixon.com forward slash recovery. Links in the description. And also my man, Aaron Bennett, who is living the sweet van life, who puts out fantastic videos on the things that are going on in the crypto sphere as well as the things that are happening as far as like Celsius or whatever it's called now. So follow those two gentlemen and they will let you know exactly what's going on. Now, let's get into the little Q&A. Also, a little bonus for everybody. Uh, tonight, we're going to do part two of the Miro Solana meme coin giveaway. So yesterday, we gave away 10,000 uh, Miro, Miro coins. And uh, we're going to give away another 10,000. Roughly about, a, I think it's like... Uh, 1400 bucks or something like that. So just go over there. Uh, we'll do this at the end. I'll give you a link. And uh, yeah, we had, I gave, it was, it was pretty fun. Yesterday I got to give away 20. There was 20 winners. And I just, and I show you how I collect the uh, Solana uh, wallets. And then I just give it to you live. And then you get them like, like that. It's pretty cool. So we'll do that for the Q&A. And I'll let you know how that works out.